Can we do a clap? Two, one. <laughs> I felt like a kindergartner. You were like, all right, let's do a clap. All right, class. If you can hear me, clap twice. <laughs> How are you? I'm off a very strong CBD supplement. I feel like a mellow river. I feel like, okay. I feel like the honey just flowing on the side of a bottle. Right now. <laughs> Metaphor, you painted a picture. I'm off too much coffee, so we might be exact opposite types of energy right now. Maybe I'm exactly what you need. I think, I think you're not wrong. I think you're not wrong, and that's why I'm happy to have you back here today. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Lesbian vs. Baby Gay. My name is Elena Joy. For any of you who don't know me, I make videos mostly about the LGBTQ community here on this channel. And sometimes I bring on my older, wiser, more experienced gay friends, and we talk about queer dating, relationships, sex. And the first thing I want to ask you about Jade Fox is your hat. I picked this hat because you let me know that the sponsor of this video is Adam and Eve. And so I picked my most fleshy colored crevice having dildo oh no. top point style hat. You're on theme. I'm on theme, I'm on brand. You went over and above to like come dressed on theme. I really appreciate that. This is how I show up for you. Maybe you're just what I need. Maybe I'm just what you need. Do you see? Do you <laughs> yes. see? I'm not even trying, and yet, <laughs> and yet. For any of you who aren't familiar, this is the one, the only, I'm indicating down here because that's where she is on my computer, Jade Fox, fan favorite, my god. I went on my Instagram, if any of you don't follow me on Instagram already, go and do that, it's where the magic happens, and I asked if you had any questions for me and Jade. Usually I don't look at these ahead of time, but this time I did because I also wanted to come prepared. I wanted to prepare for you. You wanted to come prepared. Not trying, no effort, never any lessons. <laughs> this is just me, I'm on fire. It's the CBD pill. <laughs> I'm flustered. You have flustered me and we're like four minutes into recording. Oh God, okay, where do we wanna start? Oh, first of all, are you actually older than me? Did we do this last time? I'm 30. Okay, I'm almost 30. In like two seconds, I'll be 30. Do you feel qualified to be here? I guess is the first question. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to sell it, whatever it is. It's Adam and Eve. It's Adam and Eve adult toys. That's what we're here to sell. Okay, so, so this person said, I'd love to hear Jade's take on the question of are you a bottom or just an inexperienced top? A little bit of context. Okay. First of all, it's 2022. We're past bottoms and tops. We know this. Obviously, you can still use that to kind of describe various sexual experiences. Over the past, I'm going to say six months. Well, over the past, like two years, I've been on a journey of self-discovery, right? We're learning, we're growing, we're figuring shit out. More recently, the journey, asking myself the question, let's say asking everybody the question, are you really a bottom or are you just inexperienced at topping? Thoughts. My thoughts are, what do you feel like in that moment? How explicit can I get? Oh, you go for it. I can always edit. Say you're getting plowed. Oh God. And you're like, this is great. I feel powerful. I feel amazing. I love the sound. You might be in your full bottom moment, but say that's happening and you're like, mm, this is tasty, but let's take it up a notch. <laughs> Maybe you're averse in that moment because here's the thing, I'm verse. Sometimes I don't really know what I want until something is happening. And so it's like the thing that gets me aroused may not be the thing that gets me off. Think about you and what your body wants, mm -hmm. what it's responding to, what it wants to do, and whatever that is, that sums up your role in that moment. And that can change at any time. I think you've just spoken to basically this idea that claiming that everyone needs to fit into a top or bottom or verse or whatever box is less helpful than like exactly what do I feel in this moment? What do I want in this moment? What do I want to do? What do I want done to me? Can we elaborate? Can you elaborate on what you just said about what arouses me might not be the thing that gets me off? I don't think that's a distinction that I've heard folks talk about before. I feel like people just don't think about the very psychological part to sex. And for lesbians, 
ugh, the way we be slinging that silicone around. There's like a whole <laughs> bunch of psychological elements to the things that get us off. Like, I like the visual of a shit being sucked. I'm very aware that it's not attached to my body. I'm very aware that it's not like a one-to-one -one situation, but it works. And so I think the like, what gets me aroused versus what gets me off component is less body focused like what am i physically doing and more of mentally is it the feeling of power is it the feeling of topping is it being submissive and those things are very much mm -hmm. like a mental state that can then drive what you decide to do with your body what you've just described to me sounds so freeing because it's it's less orgasm focused and less like you said physical body focused the fun that's possible within that exploration of something that's so by definition not interacting with your physical body i can't personally repeat the thing you said <laughs> but we all remember. There's so much to explore. Like you shouldn't go into sex thinking about the physicality first because think of all the times that you've had bad sex. That was another question that someone had said was like, I had my first queer sex experience and it was bad. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean essentially? Bad sex isn't always just the sex itself. It's like, did you even want to do it? Were you attracted to the person? Did you like the person? Did the person make you feel like they wanted to be there? You know, like there's a lot of other cues, I guess that can happen, mm -hmm. that should happen. I'm what you need, you're what I need, period. I think we try to assume what the body wants based off of what we've seen before. Yes, put that on a shirt. I think we just assume what the body wants all the time. And sometimes the body just needs a minute. <laughs> sometimes the body just needs like, I need more information here before we can like process the paperwork. <laughs> and so bad sex, it's like, it happens. It's not that big of a deal. You take the, the lesson from it and then you just apply it to the next time. And the fun is in discovering. The fun is in being able to ask yourself the question in each moment, checking in through the experience. What do I want? What feels good? This is like some, oh, what's her name? Some yoga with Adrian. Have you heard of this woman? No. This like yoga guru on YouTube. She always says, find what feels good, but she means that like in yoga. Yeah. Also in lesbian sex. If that person doesn't make you feel good non-sexually, they can't can't make you feel good sexually. Oh, take that with you. You know what that's like? That is like honey down the side of a jar. You see, it's happening. I can't believe you've opened. Like, I was like, I'm gonna start easy. The first line out of your mouth was, "Say you're getting plowed." <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Toy slash accessory recommendations for partnered play. Partnered. Partnered play. Play. That person is over 40. <laughs> that's like a, that's a phrase I got from a, from a listicle. Wow, what do we have here? <laughs> Just off screen. I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Adam and Eve. You all know I have worked with Adam and Eve for years. If you use my code FENDER, you get free shipping within Canada and the USA and 50% off one single item. They sent me a box of goodies like they do. They have this one brand on there called Cal Exotics. Like, hello, do these not look like beautiful vibrators? They've got something called the French Kiss Charmer. That's one of those clit ones. Yes. <laughs> It's got like one of those little like tongues in little there. Super, you know? Little super sucker. I don't think, <laughs> no. oh, okay. it's not like, a, <laughs> not a suction guy, but I, I understand. I like where your head's at. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. This has piqued my interest. What the options could be endless. Is it like one in the pink, one in the stink? <laughs> Kind of vibe? Um, I don't know if that's the intention, but it says where during intimate encounters with a partner, AKA partner play. <laughs> I really don't see why not. I mean, if they're super close together, it's like bowling balls when sometimes the, the holes are far apart and sometimes they're close. Sorry, well, one more time, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sometimes you're like this and sometimes you're like this. Partnership. You just keep bringing the visuals, you really do. There's a whole series of toys out there that are like wearable. So this is a wearable panty vibrator. You wear it inside of your gitch, and then there's a remote. Your partner can control it. You can wear it out mm -hmm. in public. I'm not saying I endorse that, but- I do endorse that. Okay. I do. Kate endorses I do it. endorse wearing it in public. And I bet yoga with Adrian- At a baby shower. Would say the same. A christening. Wait, what? Oh no. You gotta make it fun. And then lastly, oh, also by Cal Exotics, they sent the Chic Tulip. Here you've got like a, a little ball at the top that's like gonna roll around. Oh, nice. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> Primo. If anything I just showed piqued your interest or you want to check out any of the other literally thousands of toys that they have on their site, you can go to adamandeve.com. And remember, use my code FENDER for 50% off a single item and free shipping within Canada and the USA. Thank you very much, Adam and Eve, for continuing to partner with me and my channel. You help me make this queer content where we can impart this wisdom. Yeah. I think we're changing the world. Nice. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice. This is partner play. Oh, that's... I'm unhinged, I think. <laughs> and that's just... <laughs> this is... I you think just... so. Let's recap what just happened. <laughs> this is partner play. Nice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Best ways to deepen emotional intimacy in queer relationships. I feel like I talk a lot about like sex and dating and like starting a relationship and figuring out your sexuality and all that. I haven't really touched on the idea of emotional intimacy or actually like building something deeper. This is what you gotta do. <laughs> you're, so, you're so prepared. Think about the things that are like the darkest things that you've ever experienced or felt that you don't even wanna talk about with yourself, talk about that with your partner. You gotta talk about like the trauma. You gotta talk about the stuff that embarrasses you, that you have shame in, like all of the things that you think are like ugly about your life. You gotta talk about that stuff because then you won't be with someone that you love and that supports you. You'll be with someone that you love and that supports you and sees all of you and still doesn't judge you for it and still loves you and supports you. I don't know, like I feel like mm, pandemic, I went through like some dark shit. It's like, I don't wanna like spread that energy, you know? But my girlfriend was like, well, if you're going through something, I can help you. Like, like it doesn't affect me the way that you think it does. I think that's like something that we all do, like to people please in a way. I'm not gonna let y'all know that I'm in a bad mood or I'm not gonna show that I'm going through stuff because I don't wanna be, you know, a damper in the room. But the only thing that's really going to like deepen your relationship with someone is if they actually can see every part of you, even the parts that you don't like about yourself. Jade, scary. That's scary advice. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're one, two plus years in, I really hope that you are not avoiding saying things because of a reaction. Like mm. I'm never scared of how my girlfriend is going to react to something that I'm going to say. There was one time <laughs> we were in the middle of an argument and she was like, I feel like you don't even care that I'm upset right now. And I was like, well, you being upset is just part of the process. In the moment, it sounded kind of like an asshole thing to say. Yeah, but in what the I, moment, maybe not great. <laughs> but what I was trying to say was like, we are literally dealing with conflict right now. And so I don't internalize it. It's almost like you're saying, I trust you. Yeah. You're saying it's not that I'm not affected by your experience, but I, I trust that this is just us moving through conflict and it doesn't yes. have some greater meaning. There's no like crisis to our relationship here. Well, and how are you gonna build trust if you don't practice vulnerability, Ugh, right? I saw somewhere, honestly, probably on TikTok, I saw someone speaking about this idea that when we share, it's like, you're burdening the other person, right? Like if I share this thing with you, I don't wanna put it on you. When in reality, you're not putting it on the other person, you're putting it in front of you so that you can look at it together. Yes. It's not like now this is off of me and it's on you. It's like now it's here and we can both see it. I think that's a really great way to put it because it's like, why wouldn't you wanna let your partner know? Cause then it doesn't feel so heavy. You don't have to do everything on your own. Oof, yeah. Did you ever try to convince yourself that you weren't a lesbian? <laughs> Um, <laughs> no. 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 Like basically when I started feeling queer feelings, like I just fully accepted it. Like it wasn't like something I battled with. If anything, I chased it because it made me feel good. So it wasn't ever something I was afraid of. Once I started like having those feelings, I was like, oh, this is nice. Oh, do I like girls? Oh, she's pretty. Mm. Like it wasn't something that was scary because it was something that felt good. If it feels good, then that means that it's aligned with me in some way. It's not this foreign scary strange thing this feeling literally happened inside of me <laughs> unprovoked <laughs> completely unprovoked and so i assumed those feelings to be real then what would you say to folks who have those feelings but they are scary like i tried to con <laughs> we all know <laughs> 
I tried to convince myself for years that I wasn't gay. Mm -hmm. Like I jumped through every possible loophole in my brain for that to not be true. <laughs> Did it do me any good? No, here we are. <laughs> it's kind of a big question, but like how would you offer some of that comfort that you've experienced to somebody who's having a different reaction to their own queerness. I would identify where it comes from because it, you may think that it's you, but it could be maybe you value the opinions of others too much, or maybe ah. you're internalizing the opinions of your parents or your friends. I don't know. I know that this isn't like, a very graceful answer. I just feel like if you are having those feelings, I understand why it is scary because potentially what you may be thinking or feeling is, well, this is a life-changing thing. And one, am I in a spot where I'm ready to make that change? Is this a life change that is even possible for me? And I think that's where a lot of the stress comes from, but it doesn't need to be a life-changing thing until you want it to be. You can engage with it in whatever way you want. And there's no right or wrong way. Say, you know, dating feels like, mm, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that just yet. Digesting some queer movies and t television though, that might be okay. And so I think that there are entry points that are going to make owning your queerness easier. Maybe you have like a pair of boxer briefs and it's like a rainbow elastic waistband, but no one sees it because it's your underwear. I love what you said about identifying where the fear is coming from. Because if there is fear associated with your feelings of queerness, <laughs> like nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, that's not your own. Yeah. Like that came from somewhere. How to talk dirty, please. All caps, emphasis on the please. This person is desperate to start their dirty talk. I'm just gonna tell you straight like this. Please, Jade Fox. It's kind of like bangs. There are people that when they have bangs, it makes perfect sense. Like Zoe De Chanel. When Beyonce wears bangs, they're cute, but she's not a bang girl. Dirty talk is the same way. There are just certain people where when they do it, it's immaculate. There are people who try it and it's fine. And then there are people, the person that tried the bangs once or twice and never again. I feel like it's okay to just have strengths and then weaknesses. If coming up with whole verbiage while your whole is Stop. engaged. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut. <laughs> Basically, it's just like, it's just not everybody's thing. And I feel like everybody tries to make it their thing and it's just okay if it's not. But what if you want it to be your thing? Like I think this person has maybe tried or is mm -hmm. maybe too scared to try yet, but knows it's something they want. How do you even dip your toes into that water? You can't get a half bang. Once you cut the bangs, they're there until they grow out. And you have to deal with them. Okay, what I've done in the past, just give instructions. I think being verbal period is something you need to get over first if you're not verbal at all. So if you're not verbal at all and then you expect to go into it like full on phone sex hotline operator professionalism, <laughs> Too much. But one thing I've learned, people just like being told literally what to do. Harder, faster, more pressure, get on top of me, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think that mm -hmm. that's like a nice way to get into it. Like you can tell the person what you want them to do to you, which doesn't take that much creativity because you literally just think, hmm, what would I like them to do to me right now? Or what you would like to do to them? I would really like to blank. I think this would feel really good. I think you would mm -hmm. look really good like this. Don't ask nicely though. You're from Canada, right? <laughs> you need to act like you're from Chicago and you need to just be like, hey Maria, come over here. Like use the very rated R version <laughs> way of saying things. Don't be like, may I, may I please at your leisure. <laughs> Slide over to okay. the right side. I'm from Canada, we're not, <laughs> we don't speak like that in Canada. <laughs> Could just add a bunch of sorries and A's in there and then you've got the Canadian version. <laughs> I don't know where you got the biscuits and crumpets accent from. But... You need to put on your Canada goose <laughs> what? and go make a cup of tea and then come back. No, literally just be like, <laughs> put on your Canada goose. Don't ask, just do it. Just be like, hey, do this. Or like, ooh, yeah, keep doing that. What would you like to do? What would you like them to do? You can start there. I don't know that I would have the courage to start with, hey, come here, do this, do that. Side bang before the full Chinese bang. Baby right, steps. you can go like curtain bangs. Everybody looks good with curtain bangs. Banging. And for the record, I think Beyonce would be excellent at dirty talk. Oh, Beyonce could teach a master class. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's all the questions that I have. Do you have anything you want to plug? I mean, obviously you've got your YouTube channel, your Instagram. Your Instagram is 
magic? Guys say my Instagram is where the magic happens. Your Instagram is actually where real magic happens. Your fashion and style is, like look at the hat. You did that without even trying. Art imitates life. <laughs> this is someone's, Never mind. No, please. Keep going. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is someone's right now. Okay. Because of all that partner play. Yeah, if you want like personal style tips, I have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to that. It's an androgynous fashion channel. Get your life over there. My main channel, she's a little destitute at the moment, but we're gonna come back. Boop. But the Instagram is really where it goes down. For the most part, that's, that's me. That'll all be linked in the description. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Thank you again to Adam and Eve for sponsoring this content. Use my code Fender, you guys know the drill. A huge thank you to my VIP patrons, my vitally important producers. You all make my world go round. And of course, thank you Jade for being here. Of course, that's the moment you decide to look down at. Yes. I was doing so many that's. other things and then that's the thing that you saw. Didn't see any of the other things. I was imagining this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed it. I love you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> God, sorry. I'm just. <laughs> I just want to be good at clothes. You don't want anything else on your plate right now. Clear my schedule. I'm putting on these shorts. <laughs>